Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Lovely day, isn't it? Just lovely, sir. Here are your copies of the IBC book. <laughs> Mr. Brown, what happened? You squashed my drinking cup. Oh, sir, I'm awfully sorry. It no, was no, just no, a... don't come near me. It's just an accident. No, no, don't, don't apologize. It was my own stupidity for leaving the safety of my office, knowing you were loose in the building. Here's your copy of the IBC bulletin, sir. It won't uh, blow up in my face, will it? Of course not. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm going to take this cup of water into the safety of my own office and drink it in peace. You will excuse me? Yes, sir. He's kind of touchy this morning, isn't he? I was hoping I'd find him in better spirits. There's something terribly important I have to ask him. Oh, I don't think this is a very opportune time. Why don't you see him later? No, I believe in striking while the iron is hot. <laughs> Wish me luck, Pat. One thing I must say for you, you're persistent. Well, I, I didn't know that you were standing there. Let's face it, the world just isn't big enough for the both of us. Oh, I, I did so want to impress you today, I didn't want to do anything wrong. Today? What's so important about today? Well, Mr. Brown, I did want to talk to you about my future. Strange. I was just thinking about your future myself. You were, sir? Yes, whether you have one here or not. Oh, I, I believe I have one here. Have you read the latest edition of the IBC Bulletin? I was just attempting to read it when suddenly I was hit by a tidal wave. Yes, well, as editor-in-chief of the paper, I believe I've done an awfully good job. Have you read my editorial? That's impossible. I'm afraid your editorial went out with the tide. Well, if I may, I'll, I'll try and read it to you, sir. Your editor feels that when a page has given the network a faithful and loyal service for several years, it is time for him to be moved up in the organization. And I plan to speak to Mr. Brown about this today. That will be a real test of the power of the press. End of editorial. Why don't you just throw another cup of water in my face? <laughs> well, Mr. Brown, I feel as though I'm ready to be moved up in the organization. I've had my eye on the network newsroom. After all, I've... I've worn gold braid for over a year. <laughs> You're right, Mulligan. It is our policy to integrate our pages into the machinery of our network. Now, we have laid out a full program to try to find the right niche for the right young man. I'm very happy to see that you're thinking along these lines. Well, sir, what do you think of my chances getting into the newsroom? Very good. If you have the qualifications. I'll set up an appointment for you with Mr. Bowers, the head of our newsroom. Gee, that's, that's great, Mr. Brown. Now, now, don't get too excited. You know, before you go into this, perhaps you should know what the life of a newspaper man is really like. I think you're right. Let's see. I could send you down to see Al Harmon of the Los Angeles Gazette. He was always a good friend of mine. Gosh, Mr. Brown, I, that's wonderful. I'll go down right after work. You know, this is very unselfish of you, sir. Giving me an opportunity to leave you and work for somebody else. Yes. Yes, I know. Sir, but is this the news? Ow! <laughs> uh, pardon me, ma'am, but what crime are you covering? The Cyril Darcy Garden Party. The Cyril... It, uh, must be pretty rough being the society editor. <laughs> Only when I covered the horse show. The horse show? Darling, I don't dig horses. Excuse me, ma'am, but where would I find uh, uh, Mr. Harmon? Next cell. Thank you. Pardon me, sir, you Mr. Harmon? That's what it says on the byline when I get one. I'm Mickey Mulligan, sir. Oh, hello, Mulligan. <laughs> Say, tell me, what crime are you covering now? 
the Fuchsia Festival in Anaheim. Oh, I see. The, the convict is hiding out there. Is that right? Yeah. One of the Fuchsias was strangled by a caterpillar. Pretty messy caper. Pardon me, sir, but what, what kind of a newspaper office is this? There's no convicts hiding under the desks, no phone ringing, no, no people coming in and saying, stop the presses or anything? What is this? What kind of a newspaper office is it? What kind have you seen? Well, the ones like everybody else, you know, in the, in the movies. Oh, well, that's what we get for having a city editor who never goes to the movies. Say, uh, the next time somebody goes out for coffee, would they bring me some, too? Please? <laughs> Pardon me, but who was that, sir? The city editor, long may he reign. The city editor, it couldn't be. He didn't come in and yell, stop the presses. He didn't bawl anybody out or anything like I've seen. Look, Mickey, I know you're disillusioned, but you must remember the newspaper business is like any other business. It's more routine than exciting. That's the way we get the papers out. Yeah, but doesn't anybody ever come in and say, stop the presses for a scoop? Sometimes. Look, your boss, Mr. Brown, told me you wanted to know the facts about putting out a newspaper. That's right. Well, these are the facts. I'm sorry if they're not as glamorous as you expected. Well, frankly, I expected more than a fuchsia festival, I'll guarantee you. I'll tell you what, Mulligan, I've got to stick by the phone. Why don't you take this money, go down to the drugstore, and get us some coffee? And we'll come back and we'll drink and we'll talk this whole thing out. All right, fine. Okay, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. Uh, I'm a... Stop the air conditioning. My office is freezing. <laughs> Let's kill this story on the missing millionaire. It's old stuff. Well, the wire service handled it. They had a couple of tips that Wentworth was seen in the East. Yeah, and last week they had a tip he was seen boarding a bus in Omaha. He's been missing three months. Let's leave it that way. Okay, Chief, but it helps fill up the front page. Movie starlets aren't posing in bathing suits as much as they used to. Well, we'll print the weather report in larger type and quote another flying saucer story. <laughs> Say, Chief, have you got a minute? I've got a lot of minutes. I've already sent the last edition in. Maggie, Mac, come here a minute. Charlie, you're in on this, too. Now, Harmon, if you're going to suggest bridge, that's out. Did any of you ever stop to realize the movies are putting out a better newspaper than we are? Why shouldn't they? They've got cinema scoop. <laughs> Did you see that kid that was just in here talking to me? When he walked in, he wanted to be a newspaper man. But after one look at us, all the glamour and excitement went out of it. We could arrange a massacre for him. See, we can't lose kids like this. That's the kind of young blood we need in this business. Remember our first days as reporters? That's what we were looking for, excitement. Time marches on. Why can't we put on a show for this kid? I've got the makeup. It might be interesting. I'll tell you what we can do. I'll call Marge on the phone. We've already got one of those. Now give me the details about the footprints. Yeah? Yeah, I got it. Which one's the stolen? Yeah? Who else? Look, call me back later and give me the details. Excuse me, sir, but who is that underneath the desk? Nobody, just an escaped convict. I'm hiding him under there until I can get an exclusive interview out of him before turning him over to the police. An escaped convict? Gosh, now this place is really beginning to look like a newspaper office. Pardon me, sir. Would you care for some coffee? Thanks, kid. Say, tell me, how did you escape? Well, you see, I was working in a laundry. In a laundry? Say no more. You fashioned a gun out of soap, right? Mickey! <laughs> Please don't pester my escaped convict. They're very hard to come by. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. Stop the presses! Stop the presses! Kill the front page! A flying saucer just landed on the city hall! A flying saucer! Gosh, maybe it's an invasion from Mars! I don't know. Maybe this is Mars calling now. <laughs> Gazette, Harmon. You want to confess? To what? A poison dart murder? Well, go ahead. Shoot. Hey, yeah. This phone is this phone is ringing. Shall I take it? Thank you. What time did it happen? Hello, Mulligan Gazette. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh. <laughs> Hello, Mulligan Gazette. 
What? Hang on just a minute. I think I've got a confession. Now, what was that again? Slowly now. That's right. Give me the address, please, now. Ah? Huh? 327, 327, South Granite. Aha. Uh -huh. I got it. Dining room, bedroom, and bath. Dining room, bedroom, bath. Which, which room was the murder committed in, sir? <laughs> you want to rent an apartment? You're pretty cold-blooded. You commit a murder, and then you want to rent an apartment. Hello? 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 Hung up on me. One inch. <laughs> that phone call was nothing important, just wanted to phone him for a want ad. <laughs> and you let him get away? Mickey, do you really want to be a newspaper man? You bet I do, sir. Well, as you can see, we're all pretty busy around here. Now, here's a hot tip I want you to follow up for me. Oliver Wentworth, the missing millionaire. Yeah, we got a tip that he was seen boarding a bus in Omaha. Now, I want you to get right down to the bus depot and keep an eye open for him. Did the tip say he was going to arrive here? Well, if it was that simple, our city editor would handle it himself. Now, hop to it, Mulligan. And remember, a good reporter always gets his man. Yeah, yeah, always and gets his man. And yes. Remember, the reporter's cold. How, when, where. How, when, where. <laughs> Me, sir, but my friend and I would like to know, are you by any chance Mr. Oliver Wentworth, missing millionaire? I thought sure he was the one. You know, I hate to be a killjoy, but this is a phony tip if you ask me. Somebody must have been playing a trick on that reporter friend of yours. I think maybe you're right. Well, let's get over and cover the Fuchsia Festival. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, could you tell me where the phones are? Uh, yeah, they're right around the corner there. Oh, thank you. Oh, I wonder if I could impose on you for one more favor. Uh, would you mind keeping an eye on my suitcase while I phone? Oh, well, we can't... No, do... not at all. I'd be very happy to, thank sir. Thank you. I'll be right back. That's quite all right. Now, what did you want to go and do that for? Now, we'll I... never get out of here. Haven't you ever heard of courtesy? A little courtesy, after all. Who would want to steal a grip like... Yeah, but... Uh... Wow! This guy doesn't believe in traveler's checks. $1,200 bills. We found him. We found him. We found him. Close it up. Here he comes again. Close it. We found him. We found him. We found him. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. That was very kind of you. Did you, uh, did you make your phone call? No, I didn't have any money. Oh, come now. Uh, uh, look, let's lay our cards on the table, sir. You see, we're reporters from the IBC Bulletin. Uh... You're Mr. Oliver Wentworth now, aren't you? I don't know. I don't know who I am. Well, pardon me, but why have you got all of that money in the suitcase? I don't know. I've had it for weeks. Or was it for years? I don't know. I was walking down the street one day and I realized I was carrying this suitcase. I haven't the faintest idea where it came from. Must go to a lot of quiz shows, that's all I can say. <laughs> I'm not sure it's mine, that's why I've never spent it. You see, I just can't remember anything about my past life. I have complete amnesia. Pardon me, Mr. Wentworth. Yes? I don't mean to be presumptuous, but where are you planning on staying this evening? I don't know. When I came in here, I started to make a phone call, and then I couldn't remember who I wanted to call. Quite all right, quite all right. You're welcome to stay at my place. Oh, that's very kind of you, sir. I hope I won't be any bother. You'll be no bother at all, I assure you. Hey, Mick, I'm getting that feeling again. What feeling is that? <laughs> that you're biting off more than we can chew. Oh, come on. Uh, let's go, shall we? Uh, that's right, Frank. <clears throat> oh, just a moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's quite all right. Michael. Michael, it's time to get up. Michael, you've been late for work. <laughs> it's, it's me, it's me. <laughs> Who's that man? Uh, that's Mr. X. Uh, Mr. X, uh, this is my mother. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? 
to wear in your father's pajamas. Well, but, but he couldn't wear what he had in his suitcase. Oh, well, this day didn't waste any time getting started, did it? Hurry into breakfast. I will. It was a delicious breakfast, Mrs. Mulligan. Thank you, uh, Mr. X. Oh, what? Uh, are you sure Mr. Mulligan won't object to me smoking one of his cigars? Uh, oh, no, it's quite all right. You see, Pop smokes a pipe and he has the cigars for his guests. <laughs> oh, <laughs> will Mr. Mulligan be having breakfast with us? I'm afraid he's going to be a little bit late. You see, he was the last in the shower. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting him. Yes, that should be interesting. Oh, I must have left my glasses in your car, Mickey. Excuse oh, me one I'll, moment. I'll get them for you, sir. No, I'll, I'll get them. You finish your breakfast, Mickey. Well, uh, 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 thank you. <laughs> I hate leaving them alone out there. Michael, I want to ask you a few pertinent questions about this Mr. X of yours. But I told you all there was to understand. I found him alone in a bus depot. When I got home, you and Pop were asleep, so I let him stay in my room. You did tell Pop about it, didn't you? Well, no. I didn't want to shock him before he had his breakfast, and I couldn't figure out a way to make it sound like idle chit-chat. I just hope he understands, that's all. I... We used up all the hot water. There's always enough for three showers. Well, unfortunately, this morning you were the fourth. Please, now. No jokes till after breakfast. Uh, Pop, there's something I'd like to explain to you if I'm... Just a minute, Michael. Well, I'm awake, all right. That rules out the nightmare theory. <laughs> oh, you must be Mr. Bulligan. Good morning. All righty. What bill did we forget to pay? Uh, Pop, this is Mr. X. Oh, Mr. X. Of course. Yeah. The third shower. The third shower. Yeah. You know, sometimes I feel like a fifth wheel around here. Yeah. Well, well uh, Pop, we've got to be going. <laughs> Get down to the studio, you know. Mr. X here has to be kept a secret just for now. You'll understand later when you read the special edition of the IBC Bulletin. Uh, goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, dear. Thank you, Mr. X. Uh, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Mulligan. All right, Nell, I'm ready. What's this Mr. X hocus pocus stuff about? Well, Michael's being awfully mysterious about it all, but I think I figured out what it is. Mr. X is one of those secret contestants in an audience participation show down at the network, and Michael had to keep him hidden overnight until the show goes on the air. Well, I hope if he wins the giant jackpot, he remembers he owes me a cigar. How about some breakfast? Oh, I only made enough for three. Looks like you finished out of the money again. <laughs> Coffee, sir. Thank you, now. Well, there's your front page. Boy, wait until all the New York papers see this. Hey, when am I going to meet this mysterious millionaire? Hey, it won't be long, Pat. Freddie's got him on a tour through the studio right now. Say, would you mind taking over for me for a while? I want to get my scoop on the 10 o'clock news. Well, do you think you should? Don't you worry about a thing. And now a word about the weather. The forecast is that the sun will rise at 625 and the smog will rise at 633. That gives us exactly eight minutes to enjoy the sunshine. More news in a moment, but first, here's someone you all know telling you something you'll be glad to know. Hi there, I'm Mickey Rooney. Now for the local news. Scoop, scoop. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been handed a late news bulletin. Millionaire Oliver Wentworth, who has been missing for three months, was found last night in a bus depot by two IBC pages, Mickey Mulligan and Freddie Devlin. When found, Wentworth was carrying a battered suitcase containing half a million dollars and was suffering from amnesia. I'll have full details on this on my evening broadcast. And now for the latest sports news. Mick, Mick, Oliver Wentworth gave me the slip. He's missing again. But you were supposed to watch him, Fred. Well, there were 18 people on that tour. All I've got is two eyes. Oh, if we can't produce Mr. Wentworth, then nobody will believe us. We... Oh, you, you still got his suitcase, though, huh? Yeah. Well, all we have to do is show him the half a million dollars and they'll believe us. Yeah. There. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, it's, it's empty. Yeah. He must have taken it with him. Oh, boy, now we really are in trouble. Yeah. Coast to coast.
Well, believe it or not, we were in Mr. Brown's office for over an hour trying to convince him it wasn't a hoax, but we had no proof. Nobody would believe us. And then when we talked to the reporters, why, when they got through with us, you'd have thought that Freddie and me, we'd committed the crime of the century. I hate to sound like a Monday morning quarterback, Michael, but you should have told me all about this as soon as you brought Mr. X home. That was Mr. Oliver Wentworth. If you say it was Oliver Wentworth, I believe you. That goes for me, too. But all your mother and I can testify to is that a certain Mr. X uh, slept in my pajamas, took my shower, and ate my breakfast. That's right, Michael. We were never introduced to a Mr. Wentworth, just a mysterious Mr. X. Well, Mr. Brown got orders from the brass to fire Freddie and me. Oh, Michael, they wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't they? We turn in our uniforms tomorrow morning. Just a minute. Nobody fires Joe Mulligan's son while I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Gentlemen. I want you to understand that this is not my doing. As the heads of the network feel that our organization has been publicly embarrassed and that therefore you must be discharged. <laughs> I'll turn in my insignia. Oh, I don't believe that's necessary. My aigulette? No. <laughs> Just a minute. This is not a court martial. Yes, Here's my pass key, sir. Yes, oh, I'll fellas. give you my pass key and my parking pass. Mr. No, Bob. stop that, fellas. Let's forget the dramatics. You don't have to try to make me feel bad about you being fired. I feel bad enough already. Come in. Oh, Charles. Sorry I'm late. I got tied up with a feature story. Thank heavens you got here, Al. We've just been having an amateur production of the Kane Mutiny. Mickey, Freddy, I feel partly responsible for you fellas losing your jobs. After all, I sent you on that wild goose chase. That was no goose chase, sir. All right, all right. Anyway, I've arranged for you fellas to go to work for the Gazette. The Gazette? You mean after the way we messed up that big scoop, you still want us to become newspaper men? Why not? As my old city editor used to say, good newspaper men aren't born, they're driven to it. I suppose we'll have to start by covering the Fuchsia Festival? Not quite that high up. You'll start at the circulation department. And remember, no more imaginary millionaires. Oh, oh, just a minute, sir. We really did... Uh, they've convinced me, Fred. There was no such person as Oliver Wentworth. Uh, we just imagined it. Oh, oh, I'll buy that. We just imagined it. Come in. Pop! Mr. Brown, may I interrupt your firing my son and Freddie long enough to introduce you to Mr. Oliver Wentworth? Your Wentworth? Yes, I'm sure of that now, thanks to Mickey and Freddie. I've spent the last day tracking down my past, and now I know who I am. Pop, where did you find Mr. Wentworth? He came back to the house to thank you for what you'd done and to pick up the half million dollars he took out of the suitcase and hid under your mattress. Under the mattress? No wonder I didn't sleep so well last night. <laughs> Boys, it looks like we owe you an apology. I'm sure your old jobs are waiting for you if you want them back. Hello, Gazette. Give me the copy desk, quick. Mac Harmon, stop the presses. The missing millionaire, Oliver Wentworth, has just shown up and substantiated the story of Mickey Mulligan and Freddie Devlin, who found him in the bus depot night before last. It was no hoax. And don't forget, the International Broadcasting Company got that scoop on the air first. You got that, Mac? Okay. Oh, Mac, I want the byline to read, Mickey Mulligan and Freddie Devlin. <laughs> Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. And now a word from next week's sponsor. Uh -huh. That was the good word from the great sponsor who will bring you my next show. Be with us then, won't you, friends? <laughs> Incidentally, this is the latest edition of the IBC Bulletin, which tells all about how Fred and I decided to keep our jobs at the network and how Mr. Wentworth was very appreciative for what we did for him and gave us each a $100 bill. Here it is, too. Pop always told me that money wouldn't last long with me, that it would burn a hole in my pocket. <laughs> well, I don't worry about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs>